find a way to be your own friend. That's mm-hmm. really, mm-hmm. that's what it comes down to for sure. Don't forget yourself. You know, don't leave it all behind. Make your plan, you know, try and stick to it and do not forget to love yourself. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Here with me, I have the one and only Sajay. My- you got it, you got it. I had it, I had it. Halida, no? Halida. Halida, 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 Halida. Sajay Halida. <laughs> Welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you? I feel really good this morning. I feel affirmed in myself. Yes. I do. How are you doing? I'm doing, thank you. I am doing well. Thank you for asking. I feel great this morning. It's a little gloomy on this side, but you know, I'm the ray of light on this on this side, so I don't know. Of course. Yes. Of course. Yes. yes. Thank you so much for taking the time out to be here today. Of course, we aspire to inspire the upcoming generation with some motivation some positivity or just some of encouragement <clears throat> along the journey because it's, it's been challenging so um let's just hop into it can you just tell me a little bit about yourself who you are now how life was like after high school and yeah Oof, juicy questions okay my name is Saije I am a trans woman I use they them their pronouns and I embrace feminine pronouns um I what I do for work is 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 is, is building community, speak, staying strong with my community, and and finding members of my community who 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 are definitely not quite lost, but a, a bit off because of a bit off to the edge or 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 a bit off in the distance because of just the system we live in. So yeah. I, my job, my role, my how I live my life is 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 building family and strengthening community, and that's also what I feel like I do for work. That is my work. I love that. Love it. Love it. Love it. I I just heard that you like to stay connected with your community as well. How has your community along with your experience with the middle school and high school helped shape you into the woman you are today? All of everything I think about, I'm constantly in this like this stage in my life and in my practices for my work uh, as well and for my life to just kind of to embody the experiences I'm in. And, and when you're just doing that and sitting with yourself and feeling things, all you do is go back. And so I'm constantly back in Poughkeepsie High School and Poughkeepsie Middle School. Um, and, and funny enough, I did this, this thing with my, my parents. They moved every opposite year. Uh, so like, you know, every odd year we were back in Poughkeepsie. And the other years we were in some different place in Florida. But Poughkeepsie was what I yearned for. And that is what I think shaped me is like coming back to home, to my people, my very interesting Poughkeepsie community, like my, my brown people, like it's just, <laughs> it's beautiful here. And, and I, I think that shaped a lot of me. I wanna, it's not a privilege, but it's like, I know that like, I feel good that I, I as a kid knew when I was given the choices to go to like this school or that school right. that I was like I want to stay with Poughkeepsie because this feels like my people this feels right. genuine like home yes yeah yeah absolutely um so like I, I think I got I think I got everything out of Poughkeepsie I think I learned a lot about what I'm doing now um like in terms of my work and and just like my life goals through Poughkeepsie, and I and I want to make it clear, I don't, I do not, I do not mean administration. <laughs> I do not mean that. I mean the people. I mean the student body. I mean the the community that we had amongst our ourselves. To, you know, and and definitely uh, a lot of that was shaped by a lot of the 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 educators, the brown educators who were just there in spirit with us and right. making sure that we were we felt uplifted. You know, you just said some great things. <laughs> <laughs> And I love like how you said it's not a privilege, but you love to just come back to Poughkeepsie, stay connected, be rooted, be grounded in us. Um, And I want to also touch on like influence. And I feel like it takes someone to influence you or like you can even know who you are within yourself. But how would how would Sajay define influence? And like, what would your definition definition be of that? And did you have anyone influence you and inspire you along your journey? Ooh, 
oh, it depends on which journey, for sure. <laughs> and the yeah. answer is definitely yes. I think <laughs> Listen, we can touch on that too. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great. I think influence how I would uh, define that. I just think it's it can be a lot of things. I think uh, for 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 me, it's like kind of passive. If I'm around someone, I am being influenced by them. Like period. They don't have to say anything. I can just our energies are there together and right. we're being influenced by each other when you tell talk to me about that though and i'm thinking about the context of like poughkeepsie high school and poughkeepsie middle school and like the things i think shaped me which a lot of that is my blackness and my gender identity um it, it's gotta be like I, and i'm not gonna name names with like the black gays i went to high school with like, and, and I mean specifically black gay men and uh, actually the, the trans women too that I went to school with. Mm -hmm. It was like this, it was, it was not as safe a time and it was definitely completely stigmatized, you know, taboo mm -hmm. in our community, in our Poughkeepsie community, which is very like black, Jamaican, brown, like, you know, it's, it's it was talented. very taboo. Yeah, and, and these, these young, men in high school were just like themselves that those are my first examples I think of people genuinely being themselves despite the tribulations because I went home to tribulations but I went home knowing that I was queer and, and I, you know I went home like like knowing that I had that inside of me and that desire and just to not feel safe and I don't know what it was about them but I was just like for some somehow they are navigating through that 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 lack of 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 trust and that fear that understanding that this actually isn't safe because it wasn't it was not safe for those those young boys to be 13 15 16 and expressing themselves the way they were that is just the point back period and they did it anyway and they navigated through that and that those are, i think are the, some of the bases of my like queer black american um influence of like how to feel and be expressed right and I, i'm happy that you're able to have mentors friends and even peers even still to this day along your journey that could help that can help you that's there for you that can give you that security that you still need along your journey however there are many students <clears throat> still to this day who may feel uncomfortable coming out and saying this is who i am like you even like how you just described what would be your piece of advice to them in regards to just embracing who they are that person that you are afraid of being seen next to and you know there's there's a lot of challenges at this age and uh, that that's the person you do want to be your friend that's like the truth you know you want to be that person's friend and it's hard to it's going to be the hardest thing to do um but I would say be that person's friend. If that's too risky for you, which it can be, it really can be, and that's valid, find a way to be your own friend. That's 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 really that's what it comes down to for sure. Don't forget yourself. You know, don't leave it all behind. Make your plan, you know, try and stick to it and do not forget to love yourself. And when you come into contact with these people who 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 teach you, you know, against self-love, which you should have. A, a felt sense of, you know, understand that feeling, stay with it, stay with that discomfort and use that discomfort to make your decision. When that person makes you feel out of that, 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 that frame of self-love, that that's very, very important. And keep to that, keep to them practices and just love, love your, love your brownness, love, love, love your brownness. I just love it here. <laughs> <laughs> I love it here. <laughs> I really do. You have no idea. So that was like a great piece of advice. I love how you just said, speak who you are, love yourself, make a plan. I love how you said that. But I also want, I also want to touch on more of you. Like, can you paint a picture of yourself in sixth grade or sixth or like just a, the middle school side J? And like even oh my a little, God. And, and even a little bit of high school. Yeah. Bruh, it's the glow up for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, yeah, you would have never known it because I was dark skin and I, and I was also like chunky. We didn't, there was no such thing as a, a hashtag body positivity back then, mm -hmm. you know? So it was just kind of like being dark skin and being chunky, having an accent because I was born in Jamaica. It was just kind of like, I got picked on a bit, you know? And I don't think that stopped me from being myself because I was still shy at home. I was still, I was just shy at school. 
I, I always, you know, after settling in, you know, after, cause I would come back after moving a year, after settling in, reacquainting myself with my people, I got more expressive constantly. And, and then I would move again and I'd come back and I'd have to redo that. I still found ways to find community and like find love while I was there. And I know I did for sure, for facts. And I, and I feel good about that. Come towards high school, I think you started seeing, cause I don't think I was, I was as concerned about how where I was and stuff and how that looked. Mm-hmm. But I think when it came to high school and kind of like everyone starting to define themselves accidentally as well as intentionally, I was kind of lost, especially again, while switching through these identities, having moved back to Florida and whatever, feeling kind of lost. And I actually started noticing my, my queerness show up more like in my, my, my physical being, you know, like, because our voices started dropping because we had testosterone and stuff and, 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 and other hormones and other people start kicking in and we're starting getting defined. So I noticed that and other people noticed that I was feminine, which made me notice it more. You know, I didn't notice because that was just being me. Right. Them calling it out is what made me notice and what made me notice that I was getting called out negatively. So like that builds up a kind of training mechanism where I'm like, okay, I'm this big black person and that means something to these people. And so I'm not able to express like this because they would rather me be masculinized. But it was the negativity that made it so tough to deal with. How did you overcome that? Like, what did you like teach yourself? What did you do? What did you not do? How did you learn to overcome that? I, I was smart. I was a smart kid. That was really it. What it was is that I, I was brilliant enough. And I know every queer person in that school is brilliant enough to know that they're just mad. These people bothering you are, are truly upset. And that never left my mind. It was like the first thing that was there. I don't know. Maybe I watched a good amount of Rugrats and saw enough examples of bullying. It was like, okay, yeah, the people that bully you are just mad. And I, I knew that. I knew it was true. I'm an adult now. And I know it's true then. And I'm like, okay, yeah. Like, like those kids had an insecurity about themselves that right. they couldn't handle. And, and, and mind you, if, it, if they're teasing you about this thing, it's something about that thing that bothers them in themselves, right? right. Like, so it's like, don't beat yourself up for it. But people who have and are upset with you you know, they, they, they haven't, kids haven't learned to admire you. I saw those kids being themselves in high school and admired them and aspired to, to figure out how I could be like them. Some people don't manifest their, their repressed issues in such a way. It, it comes out in anger, it comes out in hatred, it, in fact, towards the person that they might admire. So like, wow. I don't know if that's how I dealt with it. I would say I endured it, to be honest. I would say... The, the, the folks who I aspire to, they handled it. I would say if I were to do that again, I would just be myself. I would show them exactly what they can't, they're, they're afraid and want to see. You know, they're both afraid of it and they want to see it. And, 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 and ultimately it's not for them, right? Because they're going to have this opinion whether you express yourself or you don't. So it's just going to come back to you. And, and, and that's, that's like significant. It's like, how do you want to remember this? And how do you want to be in this moment? Mm-hmm. So I think like that's now what what, what carries me now. It's like it is like how do I want to be in this moment? And and it's none of that is contingent upon what other people like want to see out of me. What would your current advice be to the current class of two thousand and twenty five? Community, find yourselves within each other. You know. Um, that's like mega, mega important. It's sometimes very hard in this world, like where we're like taught to kind of hate these pieces about ourselves. Like you may see that in someone and like feel like you should keep a distance from them, but no, try and like find a way to connect with this person who is so much like you. And, and that might be hard to do in your school. And I get that. Find community, find community that resembles yourself and try and find ways to work with that. And if you can't work with the community that you find in terms like your school community, look inside your greater community in your city, in your region, and find those LGBTQ orgs that can help you on your way. Whether that, you know, some of these things, we mainly talked about, about some of the superficial things that go on in high school to do with queerness, but there are so many, like, I don't want to call them larger because those things really suck, but other issues like, like food security, uh, housing and security, and these organizations can help you with that where your community can't. 
or, or, or should be able to, right? So try, I would try those out. I think what I've learned though, and it's been kind of annoying and cliche because the word community is used so much in the circles that I'm in, but that was the thing I think that that would have saved me and inevitably did save me. Right, and it's like, when you actually look at the definition of a community or just if you ask someone to define a community, they'll just say more of a home, that security, that base, that foundation that one needs in order to grow and and become more themselves. And I love that you have that. And I love that you developed that along your journey. And I would say, it seems like you have a village, but I need, I need you to also get sworn in. <laughs> Are you ready? Yes, yeah. So <clears throat> repeat after me. No matter where I stand. No matter where I stand. My village is behind me. My village is behind me. I vow to never give up. I vow to never give up. And be the best pioneer I can be. And be the best pioneer I can be. <laughs> oh my goodness. This interview was amazing from beginning, to, before I even started recording, from beginning to end. I want to thank you, Sajay Halida. <laughs> Come on. You got it. All right. Bless you. Sajay Halida for coming on today, for not only educating myself, but for educating anyone else who watches, but for also giving our, our current um, student body that, that courage, that confidence, just for just pouring into them, for giving them that security that they may need along their journey, especially during this, especially during these challenging times. Um, I wholeheartedly appreciate you. Thank you. Do you have anything else to say? Do you want to leave the people with one last, one last word? Just, I would say if you are, if you are that stuck, if you can't 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 find or inform community, it's hard because the template there isn't set up for you to do that kind of thing. Again, just reach out because I'm here and I am here intentfully, and I want you to do as great as you are meant to do. And trust me, it's great. You are meant to be great. Yes, thank you so much. All right. Well, we're gonna sign out. And thank you. Bye, Jakira. Hey there. So my current Poughkeepsie Middle and High School students, if you're watching this. Breathe and remember that you have support. I need to remind you that it's not easy. It takes a village. It takes one to raise one. But you have us to support you. All right? Push through. You're almost there. That's where the soul flies. I can't see New York. That's where the soul lies. Coming straight on the A45.